it's Kevin Rayburn, I'm back. Thank you for being part of Photo PXL, and we're excited, I'm excited, uh, to start a video series on printing. Today we want to talk about some of the new exciting printers that are coming out, and specifically right now, the Epson P700 and the P900. And why do I want to talk to you about these? Well, it's time to start printing at home. We're all locked down, we're going to be that way at least for another nine months or so, and this is an opportunity to start putting your photographs on paper. What I'm really excited about, and for years, I've been saying to Epson and other companies, gosh, when are we gonna to get to the point where making prints is like turning on our color TV? Now, if any of you are older, like myself, you might remember when we got the first color TVs and up to a few years ago, you used to have a tube TV and you'd get it out of the box and you'd have color and tint, brightness, and all these adjustments you as the user would have to make. And uh, I went into a lot of friends' houses and just saw ghastly color on the television sets. It was just too hard for a lot of people to just, you know, plug and play and get a TV that works. Now with the flat screen TVs, you can go to Costco, buy yourself a 60 inch TV, set it up, turn it on, and you've got great color right out of the box. I mean, that is truly out of the box experience. Well, we probably right now are the same place with printers. And with this P700, we're now at a point where it's really easy to print. So this P700 is a wireless printer. I've set it up in my house to be wireless and it works right on my wireless network. That means from any of my devices, I can make prints all wirelessly. I don't have to be connected to the printer by a USB cable. The P700 printer has a set of inks, and we'll look at those in a minute. Since we're printing, we can't open up the, uh, the top. And you don't have to exchange matte and photo black. Now, for all of you that don't know anything about the printing, in the past, there's never been enough ink combinations. So if you were gonna switch over to matte paper, you would actually have to pull the cartridge out, put a matte cartridge in, recharge the system, clean the system out, and then print your matte paper. Now you can automatically change on the fly. So I have luster paper in here right now, Epson Premium Luster, and it's printing 13 by 19 very easily. And if I wanted to switch over to some of the matte papers, all I have to do is in the Epson print layout or whatever I'm using to drive the images uh, to the printer, switch it over to the new paper. And if it's matte paper, the printer will automatically switch the inks to matte. There's also this thing called uh, carbon black. And on the glossy papers, what it does is it really intensifies the blacks and makes a very contrasty kind of look, uh, very similar to type R prints, probably more similar to the Cibachrome prints. If you all remember Cibachrome from the day, uh, Cibachrome was a great way to make images from your transparencies. Uh, very complicated, very dangerous if you're gonna do it yourself, a lot of bad chemicals. As a matter of fact, <laughs> all dark rooms had a lot of bad chemicals, but the, the Cibachrome was, when they, when they give you rubber gloves in the processing kit for Cibachrome, you know you gotta be careful. In any case, the Cibachrome made beautiful, uh, contrasty, very unique, super glossy prints from your transparencies. And that's what the uh, carbon black here in the Epson printer is all about. Some other new things about this Epson printer. The P700 does a maximum of 13 by 19 inch size. It also has a roll feed in the back for 13 inch paper so you can do panoramas of any length. Setup was really super easy with this too. You put the ink cartridges in, it takes about half an hour or so to uh, charge the system and get the printer set up. You end up using the control panel and you hook up to your network, get everything set to go, and it's actually really pretty much automatic. It automatically searches for the network and finds the network. You say it's okay, you put in the password, and boom, it's connected. And I've never touched it ever since. You were given a set of uh, starter cartridges for your ink when you get the printer. I will warn you, um, I went into maybe 10 or 15 prints after the initial setup, and I was already told I was running low on ink. So Epson's not delivering the full cartridges of ink uh, in that kit from what I can tell. Uh, so uh, if you're gonna be getting this printer, make sure you order up a set of extra ink cartridges. And the screen actually displays the image that's being printed, but it also is a control screen and it allows you to check the status of the ink, change paper types, sizes, and so forth. All touch sensitive, very intuitive to use, and it works really, really well. This was the picture while I was talking. Uh, it didn't take very long at all to make, and it looks really pretty damn nice, doesn't it? 
This was done in Yosemite Valley last year. So uh, kind of cool that you can make these images so easily right at home. Now, you don't have to go into Lightroom. If you can print directly this printer from Lightroom if you want. And you can do all the things that you've normally done if you were interested in printing from Lightroom. Although, it, you know, for somebody that just wants to make prints, um, you, know, you do have to follow a number of the steps in the, the print dialog boxes and so forth to do that. Whereas in the Epson print layout software, both on uh, the desktop computer and laptop computer and the iPad, you don't. What this printer uh, is really good for is I've got 98,000 images in my photo library here. So, you know, when I get here, I mean, I've got images just galore. And a lot of times what I do is if I make an image, I'll transfer it over to my iPad because it's a good way to share images or move them around. And if I just decided I wanted to make a print, you know, I could take a look at any one of these images and, you know, go ahead and make them right from my roll. So there's uh, probably 93,000 images, I think, in here. And I've got many albums. So on my albums, for example, I have a social media folder, which I use to do social media. And, you know, I can make images from any one of these. So uh, the beauty is I can be sitting at the kitchen table and uh, we're looking at the pictures on the iPhone or my iPad that we used uh, and shot the night before at a picnic. And I can, boom, pick one, set it up and print it without having to worry about any of the color management and everything like that. It's all done for you in the, the, the software. So it's really, really, really pretty cool. Um, let's take a look for a minute at what the uh, ink setup looks like on this printer. Um, first off, everything slides in. So when you're done, you can take everything down and you close it up. So if you're not going to be using it, it all kind of forms a nice, clever box. It doesn't take up a lot of space. You can put it on a, a side of a desk on top of a a dresser or a cabinet and it doesn't look too bad it's just a big black cube and when you're ready to print you open up the print sheet feed pull that up you drop your paper in this is 13 by 19 paper you pull the back front tray down and you pull this paper feed tray out now there are other ways you can feed paper in if I'm doing really thick fine art paper I pull this down and there's settings here and I can feed my paper in manually, push a button, pushes it up, close the tray, and then the print makes a print and it comes out. So in the sheet feeder, I can put up to 10 sheets of paper. So I can pretty much uh, keep printing uh, as long as I want. But if I'm using a really thick, fine art paper, uh, I would have to probably feed it from either a back feed or the front feed like I just showed you. It's actually quite simple. Inside here, as we lift up this cover, once again, accessing the inks is very easy. You can see they all have ink cartridges, and you just pull an ink cartridge out like that, and you plug them back in. Very, very easy to work with. You get a status display here. So once it's uh, recognizing everything, you'll get an ink status and so forth. Uh, works out very, very nicely. So it's uh, really well designed, and it, it, it's been working really incredibly beautifully. If you have a P600, this is the next system up. Um, it's got a different print head and a lot of other neat features that make it work better, but there's nothing wrong with the P600 and you probably get that for a good price right now. So it works just as well, not as seamlessly as this, but you can uh, make prints nicely. However, uh, the Epson print layout uh, works best and specifically with the iPad uh, versions only with the P700 and the P900. I don't know if they're going to upgrade those or not. So uh, keep that in mind. Frankly, I would just go for this printer and uh, work with it all you want. To set things up when you're working with it, you would actually pick paper type here and it presents you a listing of the different paper types. Now it comes built in with all the Epson papers. If you want to add a different paper, like I told you I use Canson uh, papers sometimes or Moab papers, there's an Epson Media Installer, and it's an app uh, on your machine, and you can actually install very easily all the parameters and the profiles for these other uh, papers so that you can just select them from the pull-down list on Epson Print Layout and or on, on this machine here. So um, I have added uh, the Canson and some Moab papers and uh, tried that out, and it works out nicely, and it, it feeds this printer very, very well. So uh, that's pretty seamless. 
Um, you can go in and get different menus. You got a home menu. It tells you how, right now I have low ink, and I can take a look at the ink status info by clicking here, and I'm about to run out of photo black and a couple other inks. This is roughly an $800 printer, uh, $799 to be exact. Uh, it has a big brother that does 17 inch wide paper. Remember this is only 13 inch wide, but hey, for the most part, how many people are gonna be making prints bigger than 13 by 19? Um, for me, I run down the studio and use my bigger printers if I'm gonna be doing that. Now we have a printer for less than $800 that we can put in our home and make prints with at the push of a button from our mobile devices or our laptops or our desktop computers. This is all about making prints easy. Okay, you don't have to learn color management, although some of it might help a little bit, but it's just at the point now where, you know, you set it up, find a network, put the apps together, find the printer on the apps, and once you're done that, just go start making prints. And that's what I've been doing. This is my cat, Georgia, named after Georgia O'Keeffe. That was a lot of fun to make a print. Uh, it's kind of a cool picture, you know, to hold something from your iPhone, shot with an iPhone, this big. And the 13 by 19 prints, if you don't crop them too much and everything, pretty darn nice right from uh, this printer. Now that we've got a device, I'm not swiping and sharing images. I'm actually putting images uh, to print, which is what I believe in. Because when I grew up, and back in the day, as they would say, you didn't have a photograph until you had a print because most of the time you're shooting with slides or transparencies, and then basically you had to make a print. So now I'm making prints, and I'm making prints in my basement. I'm making four by sixes on my PictureMate 400, which are easy to share and send around, put in an envelope and give to friends. Normally what I'd like to do is put it on my coffee table where I have my photograph books and uh, my coffee table books of photographs, as well as my boxes of photographs that uh, we can share with friends when they come over and pass them all around. So I had a lot of fun printing. It's nice that here in 2020, we got printers that are basically push button friendly printers. And we haven't had this before. So uh, it's quite fun to be part of it. We get damn nice prints and you don't have to do all the fuss and the muss that goes with it. Epson, nice job. Everything's working really good and it's a lot of fun. So I think that's what it's all about. So while we're in lockdown, do yourself a favor, find all your old images, set them all up, get a printer, Get a box of paper, extra set of ink too, and go for it. This is Kevin Raver, and I want to say thank you for being part of photopxl.com. And we're really working hard to enhance your vision every day. Thanks, everybody.